Welcome to All About Us Teen Talk TV. We thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, All About Us Teen Talk um, is associated with All About Us Youth Magazine, uh, and we're glad to say that we are launching our promo tomorrow. It will be available online at www.aauym.com. So make sure you check us out and check out the promo. Today we have a very special guest for you. We're going to be we will be talking about detoxing your body. We're, we're going to be talking about health, natural health, different things that you could do to, um, to, to just mind, body, and health just to, all over to remake yourself in a natural way. We have very special guests today. We have with us Shay, uh, Elizabeth, Angel. And we have our very special guest, Dr. Jalisa Hernandez, and we welcome you and we thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, well, we just, we're going to get into it, and we just want to say um, thank you for joining us, Dr. Jalisa Hernandez. Um, we would like for you just to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, ladies, ladies. <laughs> uh, first off, uh, please know that I will consider myself your resident naturopathic doctor. In other words, in natural medicine. I have been practicing for over 19 years. Uh, I'm an international speaker, teacher of natural medicine, uh, radio, television personality, and uh, have also been known to be the resident naturopathic doctor of the Michael Bayston Show, a nationally syndicated radio show, for over nine years and I love what I do following in the footsteps of my mother <laughs> living natural medicine for uh, my whole life practically and uh, that's what I love to do and it's my mission to serve in that realm thank you for having me you're welcome thank you for joining us <laughs> being a, a natural holistic doctor is this something that you had to go to school for or did you go to school for this originally or did you go to college absolutely graduated with a doctor of naturopathy doctorate uh, mm -hmm. from Trinity College of Natural Health absolutely oh, okay so and you've been practicing for 19 years yes and you practice here in Long Island New York are you are you you have offices throughout the United States? Originally or? practicing in New York City, and I have offices in all major cities in the U.S. I'm able to move around and see patients and also do phone and Skype consultations with patients as well. Wow, this is interesting. <laughs> um, today we just want to really talk about some natural things, especially among the youth. What are some things that you are finding with the youth that you feel that needs to be addressed? I would say that better than anything, us adults have to really be a very good example for our children as far as healthier eating. Uh, we know that the bright colors and a lot of the additives and a lot of the junk foods and the fast foods that they're seeing on the television that they're eating, uh, all of that stuff looks very attractive to them. And unfortunately, whether it's teen obesity, which is something that I discussed today on a radio program that I'm a part of, uh, to childhood diabetes, just issues that we're dealing with now that we want to try to prevent disease in our children. We want to try to prevent uh, all of these imbalances that are happening within their bodies, immune problems that are happening mm -hmm. by teaching them that they need to make better choices as far as food is concerned and, and utilizing also what is exposed to them, which is herbs and roots, if they can use that to better exactly. their health. That is becoming one of my... Um champions is for a diabetes, to talk about diabetes. Um, I feel we really need to address it because it is becoming almost as prevalent as heart attacks. Mm. It's, it's, it's a chronic disease because of the things that we are eating. Um, what are some things that people who are diabetic, 
what are some steps they can take as far as holistically, mm -hmm. even if they are, say they're di mm, pre-diabetic, mm -hmm. what are some things that they could do to reverse diabetes? I would say just, again, making the different choices as far as the everyday food that we're normally eating. Instead of going towards, for example, white processed breads, let's go towards more things that are whole grain, things that are more wholesome, uh, a nine grain or a seven grain. Instead of having, for example, just uh, a fried piece of meat, let's mm -hmm. think of doing things that are baked and broiled. All of these things cause imbalances in the bloodstream. They're going to cause imbalances in the organs. And if there's already a weakness in the pancreas, the, the body's not going to be able to process those sugars the way it should. And just okay. to make better choices, sugars, uh, as far as candies and things of that sort, if the desire is to really have uh, the taste of something sweet, which is natural for the body to mm -hmm. desire that, mm -hmm. there are ways to do that by eating more fruits. And the desire will really go away when you have the proper type of sugar. When you have the, the white processed sugar, your body's just going to keep desiring it more and more. And then that's what causes that addictive craving mm -hmm. that many diabetics fall into. Okay. Um, Shay? Elizabeth or Angel, do you ha all have any questions or is something that you would like to say about diabetes? Teen health. Come Teen on, health. hit me with the questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Is there a particular question or a specific uh, subject that you want to address as far as diabetes? What about school lunches? What would you like to see change that would be help you to improve your overall? Let's you give us some real food first of all. <laughs> yes. oh, real food. <laughs> real food. <laughs> and I'm glad that you said that. What about the slimy stuff on the That's, burgers they yeah. give you? Oh, I remember that back <laughs> in the day. The thing, yeah. And they serve the same thing every single oh. day. Oh, wow. please, please, school cafeterias. I hope wow. you're listening. <laughs> Do they serve fruit? Do they give you options? Like no, they're like canned. Cups. Oh, you have fruit like cups. Like canned, yeah. Like this big. And they give you apples or an orange. Yeah, sometimes. Is that the oh, only really? kind of like real fruit? Yeah. Though, just yeah. those two pretty much are the kind yeah. of related like choices? Hmm. Okay. Is that occasionally or in it every day you're allowed to choose something like every that? Day every day you're allowed to choose something. Okay. Okay. Are they giving you guys vegetables? Any steamed vegetables at all? I've seen broccoli. Boiled broccoli. You've seen broccoli. broccoli. Much seen broccoli. <laughs> That's pretty much <laughs> it. It sounds like it happened ages ago. <laughs> I've seen broccoli. Like once every week we have oh, wow. broccoli. Wow. Okay. Okay. Do they give you an option of having salad? Yeah. yeah. So they oh, do okay, have so salad. Okay, so things are getting better. Yeah, things what? are getting better. But there's only like a few. There's only like, there's only like five, yeah, six probably per five lunch five period. And there's like a oh, wow. hundred kids in every lunch Five period. or six salads available to about a hundred kids? No, no, more than a hundred kids in the oh, cafeteria. Oh, my. Wow. Please, I hope Now, is fine. that, you, uh, they don't even offer that as an option to your meal? They don't give you options? To lunch, they just give you whatever's on. It's like A lunch, B lunch, and then peanut butter and jelly, more or less. Peanut oh. butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay. Well, there's bagels. That's pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, bagels. No. Okay, bagels. All right. So, <clears throat> what what are your plans to possibly do? I mean, have you all talked to um, the school or gone to the school board meetings and talked about, you know? how you feel maybe to change your lunch menus, more of an option. Well, what are your plans to, to change the atmosphere or have that opportunity to have more of an option to you available? Well, we talked to the principal a couple of okay. times about the school lunch. Yeah. He said that he doesn't even like any of the school lunch either. <laughs> well, we, we won't rat him out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, um, I know there's a lot of kids, there, there are some kids who have special needs. Yeah. Right. You know, like they may have special, they may be allergic to peanut butter, they might be allergic to oh, jelly, yeah, yeah. or allergic to vegetables. I mean, that happens. Certain so foods. do they have special meals as an op for you? Maybe you, you could be allergic to it. I mean, do they offer special meals or you have to bring your own lunch? Yeah, like if you're allergic to pork or something, they have like this little oven thing and it has like turkey or something, like a turkey wrap or something like oh, okay. that. So you can swap out the protein that you that you don't want to have at that time. So instead of the pork, you can pick the yeah. turkey. Okay. Okay. Some things are changing. Yeah, some things are changing. I know Michelle Obama, she has a special program that she has really been pushing 
uh, as far as taking the soda machines out of the school, yes. taking the fast food. I just couldn't believe when I saw the fast food machines, McDonald's, um, to have that option. Mm -hmm. I know in the city, some of the schools have that option mm -hmm. to, to go to McDonald's, which is unbelievable. I mean, what would you do if McDonald's was in your school? Would you be at McDonald's every day or would you be buying regular lunch? The high school, sometimes kids leave and go to McDonald's checkers or something. Cause they're yeah. close by the high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't think they serve them during lunch. But you have to be a senior, I believe, a junior or a senior, or, or you have to be in high school to be able to do that? I think just high school. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they allow you to go out to get your lunch as long as you come back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, it, it, you just mentioned the soda machines and how Michelle, um, our Obama. first lady, mm -hmm. yes, our first lady has removed the, the machines, the soda machines from the schools. A, a great way that we can really teach our kids what are the better choices, one being the example and sometimes really showing them visually what yes. things can go wrong mm -hmm. if they keep eating a certain way. Uh, a cool experiment that I always love to, to mm -hmm. present to the kids that are brought into my office that I'm dealing with uh, that may have some uh, weight issues or whatever, maybe mom and dad brought them in because they're really trying to help them out with any sort of weight challenge that mm -hmm. they may be having. So I'll tell them, you know, grab a, a clear glass of water, drop in there a drumstick of chicken bone that has no meat mm -hmm. on it, put it in a glass of soda, okay, let that sit there until wow. the next day, and the next day you will find out it is like a piece of rubber. You will have learned how wow. soda and carbonated beverages like that eat away, eats away at the calcium of your bones. And you know, kids are like, oh no, yeah. but I want to grow tall. <laughs> you know, and I, and I don't want to, and I saw my grandma and wow. her bones are all knobby and she has arthritis and she's always in pain. Well, let's wow. talk about preventing disease that way and showing them what can happen if they eat a certain way. So overeating a certain amount of sugar, really it, the inside of you, we need to talk about more of what's going inside of you is going to be over a certain period of time as you get older. So that's what my challenge is, is that I want to impress upon them is to really feed yourself, feed your body, feed your mind, feed your soul now so that no matter what you're going out to do in the world, mind, body, and spirit, you're ready to take on anything. Absolutely. You're ready to take on everything to meet any challenge, but you have to feed it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just so excited that you're here. So um, we will definitely, you know, be talking about how we can detoxify, how you can take certain things out of your cabinet, you know, that are, are really affecting you and your diet. It also affects the skin. So there are different things that they can do, mm -hmm. that they can eat that affects the skin. That Am I right? Make so it healthier. Absolutely. You to make it healthier. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when we come back from this commercial, we're really going to talk about you know, what are some of the things that we could do to, you know, for our cabinets that we can start feeding our inside that will come out, out of us because it will give you a glow. Certain things, certain her herbs that they can eat, certain vegetables yes. that you can eat, the ones that you don't like. Try something new. Try something, even juicing. You know, we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So we'll be right back after this commercial. And we thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in a minute. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and Ronkonkoma, New York, and we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. 
And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to pr improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkoma, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me. Uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. Welcome back, and we thank you for joining us, joining us again. Uh, before the, the break, we were talking about juicing, talking about things that we could do to, um, for our bodies and our skin that will, certain things that we could eat to help you with your skin and your bodies, and Dr. Jalisa was going to fill us in on that. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm very insecure about my acne, okay. and I don't know how, I try everything like a proactive clean and clear neutrogena and everything but it's like won't go away okay it's really bothering me and i wanted to know how i can get it to go away all right first thing i need to tell you no matter what creams soaps anything you apply externally this is something that's coming from within it's something internal and you know that your skin from science class we know <laughs> that that's the largest <laughs> organ of your body so there's an overload of toxins, impurities, something that's trying to protrude, trying to come out. So we have to do internal issue cleansing, internal uh, you know, correction of imbalance so that your skin can clear up. So if we're talking about foods, mm -hmm. foods that she can start incorporating, when you guys go to the vegetable market, the vegetables that you see that are dark green, that your eye picks up as dark green, is perfect for cleansing the blood. And mm -hmm. anything that cleanses the blood, cleanses the skin. So that's yeah. an easy way of just picking up right then and there, thinking of vegetables that are dark green. Give me some that you, for example, have just thought of. Broccoli. Broccoli, <laughs> broccoli, <laughs> baby. <laughs> just said my favorite. My favorite veg vegetable uh -huh. of all time. Wonderful, wonderful. Also very good for your menstrual periods. Please know that. Corrects cramping and all that when you start incorporating that. But bring in the broccoli. And if you're saying, ew, nasty, steamed broccoli tastes disgusting, please don't think that. I love broccoli. <laughs> oh, you love you it. Love broccoli. <laughs> Good. Then I'm very happy to hear that. So think of cutting the stalk, you know, the, the stem, and eating just the florets. If we're talking raw broccoli, get yourself some nice little veggie dip, mm. dipping, you know, the florets into the veggie dip and eating that raw. Broccoli has no taste to it when you eat it raw. And when you eat it with the veggie dip, it'll just taste like the veggie dip. So that's great to incorporate in your diet to help cleanse the skin. Give me another, spinach. So instead of making like a regular iceberg lettuce salad, use spinach instead. You gotta go with mom or dad to the supermarket and kind of pick out those things so that, that you know you start incorporating that stuff in your diet. Another dark green vegetable, cucumbers. Yes, bring all that into your diet. You make a nice big salad of that, I promise you'll love me in a week. <laughs> Apart from you doing that, just make sure whatever products you're using on your hair and things like that don't run into your face because that can also clog your pores. And those mm. are the two main things that I recommend. Always wash your skin with freezing cold water. 
that's an excellent uh, remedy as well because acne is inflammation. Hot water makes it more inflamed, wow. make your pimples look bigger. Hmm. Nice little tip. So, <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> so freezing uh, is the, the opposite, right? So freezing cold water. That's those are the main things I recommend. And drinking water. Lots of water. Please Lots drink water. water, guys. You know, you, you're thinking, oh, but I'm mm. not an adult yet. I only need maybe like one glass a day. No, you do need at least your nice four to six, mm. and and that'll help a great deal. I promise you'll love me in a week. Drink a lot more than that. Okay, <laughs> okay, then that's fine. That's a minimum because nowadays, you know, any fluid, people are thinking that's water. <laughs> um, broccoli. When you like eat dips, is there dips that we should stay away from mm. when we're eating like raw vegetables? Is there is there are certain dips that we can make? What what can we make a dip out of mm -hmm. that will be tasty but yet not so commercial that has so many different con you know things that they put in the the dips now that like you get from the store. Down. What can we make fresh? Absolutely. I should say that. Uh, I personally, just so you know, when I say these things, I always recommend organic dips. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, you know, from a, whole, a good fresh market. But if you want to deal with something that's not creamy, because if you want to, do, if you want to correct any issues of weight management uh, focus, then you're going to want to do things like lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of sea salt, and that can be a great, great dressing that you can prepare for any salad or mm -hmm. even just to dip the raw vegetables in as well. So I do love the lemons because it's just excellent for creating good acidic balance in the body, prevents disease, you know, when you don't have high acidity. Oh, lemon, so that's okay. good. Yeah, so instead of vinegar, using lemon juice and the extra virgin olive oil. What about hummus? Hummus is wonderful. Oh, hummus, I love okay. hummus. Love made from chickpeas. Excellent. Wonderful. So that's a good substitute also for people that really don't like to incorporate a lot of those gravies yes, on top yes. of certain proteins. So mm -hmm. that's an excellent substitute as well. Absolutely. So what would we mix the hummus with, though, to give the, uh, a nice dip? Mixing it with? Yeah, what can, can we mix? What, lemon, lemon yes, olive oil? Yes, oh yes, absolutely. To make it may, uh, maybe not even so thick, to make it a little bit creamier, you can add those things in the extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin is best so that you get the true, the true uh, nutrients from the olive oil. And uh, again, lemon juice, lemon or lime. Is, are there some particular herbs that we can add to it? Ah, to love make basil. It basil. 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 Ah, okay, basil. basil. Rosemary. If you want to add rosemary to a lot of your uh, foods, excellent for hair health. Excellent mm. to make the hair nice and shiny and thick. Wonderful. Love rosemary as well. Mm. Now, you said something that struck me, like when you say in shampoo. Okay. I know there's a lot of organic, natural shampoos out there. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular organic shampoo that you could suggest that they use so it won't so much inflame their skin for acne? Or is there a particular shampoo they should stay away from? I would say try to go with anything that has as little chemicals as possible. Me personally, I love baby shampoo. <laughs> 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 it's, just, it's, it's kind of like the purest thing you'll find out there because it can't have stuff that can sting the baby's eyes and so on. Yes. And uh, it's, it's one of those secrets that I, I asked uh, um, uh, our ladies uh, of Indian heritage. I asked them a very long time ago. And I'm talking about she had hair below her wow. glutes. And, and the only secret that she told me was, I just wash my hair with baby shampoo. So after wow. that, <laughs> I've, I've kind of just loved that. Anything with as least chemicals as possible, that's what I would recommend. I love baby shampoo. That's the best for me. Wow. Mm -hmm. What about natural soaps? Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of soaps could they use to help with their skin? Anything that, that is uh, going to help in an antibacterial way. My personal recommendation, I love aloe vera soaps. Okay. So aloe they can vera. go to, yes, they can go to natural markets. She's like, yes, yes, <laughs> good, good stuff, good stuff. I love aloe vera soaps. I love vitamin E soaps if you're dealing then with uh, dry skin. If okay. you're dealing with oily, I like the aloe vera because it tends to balance the most. So those are my two favorite. Wow. What about black soap? I, I hear a lot about black soap. Anti-aging. Okay. We, turn, we turn 40 <laughs> soon, yes, yes, yes. And anything that's going to cause uh, help with anti-aging, wonderful. Black soap is great for helping to prevent a lot of the wrinkling and prevents the skin from becoming accordion-like, in okay. other words. It just get, creates okay. good texture. And I've been dealing uh, a lot about spearmint. One thing that I've been doing is um, making detox juices. Okay. Instead of going to get Kool-Aid, I've been using lemon, lime, oranges, and grapefruit, and you kind of mash it together, and you put the water in it, mm -hmm. and it, it helps detoxify your body, and, and it's a natural, a natural juice. Mm -hmm. 
instead of grabbing a soda, mm -hmm. you have your juice already made. You can use things like that. Or you can put, um, you know, just something different. Try, try different things that will, something that you like. You got kiwi. You try kiwi. Is kiwi, is that? Kiwi, kiwi what, is great. What particular fruit should diabetics, let me say this. Okay. What particular fruit for people who are pre-diabetic and diabetic, stay, stay away from? Stay away from? Yes, yeah, stay away from. My number one is the bananas. Oh. Bananas are very much consumed in the U.S. because the U.S. is very mm. high into just going towards sugar, period. Sugar, period. And it's the most eaten fruit from what's calculated here in the U.S. Wow. because it has the highest glycemic index. So I personally recommend my diabetics to stay, don't, not to eat bananas, at least until we have things nicely balanced. Okay. And uh, in the meantime, if they are going to have fruit, have no more than one handful a day. Wow. No more, no more than what can fit in the hand in your uh, in the fist of your hand. Mm -hmm. That's about it. No more than that a day. Wow, I didn't know bananas were that. Had Very, that much sugar. the highest. Yep, the highest in glycemic wow. index, and that's why they're eaten the most because they're so sugary. <laughs> wow, I it's did not so, know. So is that. it like bad to have like like a banana a day? Like Every single day. Yeah, it's it's natural sugar, but it's still sugar. So don't mm -hmm. abuse. I say you can have almost a little bit of anything healthy, gotcha. in moderation. And it's not having a little bit of, of, you know, fast food every day either. Mm -hmm, <laughs> I mm -hmm. mean, just healthy things that you can have in moderation, definitely. Mm -hmm. While we're on sugars, there are some natural sugars that I'm finding. Mm -hmm. uh, you have honey sugar. Mm -hmm. That's the new thing. Mm -hmm. They have Steva. Yes. They have yeah. Agave. Agave, yes. Agave. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. no, 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 that's fine. No, 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 you're, you're fine. Agave. Zyatol. They have Agave. It, these are alternatives that yes. you could use. Because processed sugar, explain what exactly what processed sugar is. Maybe we should go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Explain what processed sugar is so that they can understand in a little bit more depth mm -hmm. what it really is. Okay, refined sugar, white sugar, period. That's going to be very detrimental to your bloodstream. And for those, that are, for those kids that are not diabetic, sometimes it's hard for them to understand mm -hmm. how severe that disease is. In, in natural medicine, for example, we don't consider any disease worse than diabetes. It is the only disease that destroys every single system in your body. Mm. If you're talking eyesight, it's going to get weaker. If you're talking circulatory system, it'll get weaker. If you're talking bones, joints, it'll get weaker just because you're a diabetic. So you want to prevent that disease as much as possible. So if sugar, white sugar, is a poison to your body because of what's going on with that disease, you want to stay away from it as much as possible. White bread is just like eating white sugar. Mm. Every spoonful of white rice, <gasps> yes. <laughs> every, every spoonful of white rice is like eating white sugar. Brown rice. So I, I want them, and I know that you and I discussed this before yes. the show, we want to teach them substitutions. Yes. We want to teach them substitutions. So it, instead of having white sugar in the house, get honey, for example, and sweeten things with that. Things like the stevia, xylitol, things of that. So I love xylitol, by the way, which is great for baking xylitol. as well. Oh, it's okay. delicious. And wow. it tastes just like white sugar, delicious, very, uh, very little needed to sweeten things, mm -hmm. and no aftertaste. So wow. th those types of things are what you want to substitute with. So instead of white bread, you'll go with uh, more uh, whole grain breads. Instead of white rice, you'll deal with uh, things more like brown rice, which, by the way, if you eat brown rice once a week, you're 70% less likely to be a diabetic. Wow. Just eating it once a week, just eating a cup once a week, that's how wow. healthy, that's how wonderful things like brown rice is. So, you know, if you're going to an Asian, uh, you know, eating uh, establishment, instead of ordering regular white rice, order the brown rice, please, wow. because a lot of the establishments are making it now. Mm. So there you go, little substitutions. Well, little substitutions, <laughs> and we'll be right back on that note. I thank you for joining us. We'll be right back after this commercial. My name is Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. 
We also do pain management, and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multi-Medicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions, from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing, from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching to help her with her pain. Vicky is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicky is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply is one of the largest suppliers in the world and your number one resource for top quality, affordable tattoo and piercing supplies. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply is the number one supplier of tattoo inks in the world with more than 200 products including Mom's Ink, Philadelphia Eddie's Traditional Inks, Paolini Sacred Color Inks and more. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply, your one-stop shopping destination for great service, best prices and top quality supplies. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are undeniably distinctive. Selected for their unique, memorable flavor, Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are delivered to you in beautifully designed bottles featuring limited edition artwork. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are available at affordable prices in fine restaurants, bars, and liquor stores. Or check www.coneyislandcarlo.com for availability. Welcome back, and we thank you. Uh, we're going to finish with Dr. Uh, Jaleesa and Elizabeth, and we're going to talk, finish talking about white sugars and how they affect us. Um, you were saying, Dr. Jaleesa, about white sugars. I think my beautiful young lady here has Elizabeth a question. Has a question. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> so you said, like, eating white bread was bad. Is it bad to eat, like, potato bread instead of white Same bread? thing. Oh. Same thing. Oh. <laughs> The potato bread, yes, yes. The same thing as eating white bread. And that's uh, very, very rich in, in a lot of flour that's, that can cause some you know, issues with weight and so on, so yeah. So potato actually is not good. Is potato a good vegetable or a bad vegetable? It, it's a starchy vegetable. Okay. Uh, red potatoes are wonderful as well. They, they tend to be uh, even more nutritious uh, than I would say the, the regular uh, brown uh, Idaho potato. Uh, but not abusing. If, okay. if it's a French fry potato, <laughs> then, then we're having an issue there. But you know, something baked that you, you put into the oven that you know you have with a little bit of sour cream, a good, uh, healthy so, sort of you know seasoning to it, then uh, that would be okay occasionally. Just let's not abuse. Now, going away from sugar for a minute, because mm -hmm. you said sour cream. There, there is organic sour cream, yes. and there is regular sour yes. cream. I just want to know what the difference is. Because <laughs> you said sour cream. That's why I, I brought it back to okay. potato. Because I want to know what the difference between organic and regular. Of course. Think dairy, period. Okay. Difference between regular and organic. If you're doing organic dairy, then you're eliminating uh, organic. Uh, you're eliminating the body from uh, harboring any sort of hormones, uh, GMOs, genetically modified organisms, okay. that are going to cause imbalances later. Uh, a lot of those hormones are then going to contribute to 
too much estrogen, and then we're dealing with young girls with ovarian cysts, or we're dealing with young girls with uh, cysts in the breasts and so on. So right. if you want to correct the imbalance that happens when the hormones go out of whack from eating foods that have too many hormones. The organic sour cream won't have that. It won't have wow, those hormones. Okay. It won't have those uh, chemicals that a lot of the regular ones are laced with. It won't have those genetically modified organisms and things of that sort. So none of those hormones are going to exist in there that are fed to the cow that okay. then is secreted in the milk that's producing the dairy. So, Well, my son, he's, he's on this health kick because, you know, he's trying to you know, get me involved. Great. But the GMO, I'm stuck on that when you say GMO. Yeah. So just so that they understand what right. we're talking about. Right. Can you just break this down a little okay. bit? GMO in, in food and in non-food, okay. what, what's the difference? Think vegetables, ladies, uh, the pesticides that they're sprayed with so that the insects don't eat them up so that they're able to have a bigger crop when they go and cultivate the vegetables. When they're sprayed down with all of those things, those pesticides, all those chemicals, the genetically modified organisms, they're made in a dish, in other, in other words, genetically modified, and then you ingest those things. Yes, make the face. You're so right. Oh. You're so, <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're so right. So you're, you're intaking all that, and then people wonder where so much of the disease that we're seeing nowadays from. is coming from. Wow. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you, younger and younger boys, and I know that we have a panel today of just young girls, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that we'll have uh, teen boys coming in soon, yes. and we're seeing younger and younger boys with prostate inflammation and, you know, wow. constantly having to run to the restroom. Little girls, you know, that at a young age, just maybe seven, eight years old, already demonstrating yes. very de very developed bodies. Yes. You know, uh, yes. pubic hair already at a young yes. age. You know, it's, it's things that we can do to adjust that, mm -hmm. start feeding our kids healthier or more organic food. You know, <laughs> now that you're talking about GMO, it's just something that I remember that I saw on TV. Now, this is something way off the map now. We're, we're talking about meat. When you talk about meat, just to go back to that for a minute, yes. I saw something on TV that was alarming to me. Yes. In certain states out in the Midwest, mm -hmm. what they do is they take the babies away from the mothers, mm -hmm. and they put them in these little houses mm -hmm. out in the desert. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say something? Those houses that they put them in, yeah. they're, called they're called CFOs, Concentrated Cattle fe Feeding Operation okay. Houses. So what happens is when they f all feed them in one area, they feed, they feed all the cattle in one area. Okay. Then after that, they put them into the slaughterhouse. The babies? They feed them up until they're of age. Oh, to oh. Okay. Be slaughtered. But no, 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 go ahead. I'm glad. I want to know. I want to understand because I was trying to understand the conversation. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm glad, you, you know, you're filling me in. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to understand because they were talking about, my son is always saying to me when I go to the store, Mommy, you got that genetic meat, that modified whatever, this meat that you got to be careful about the meat because you have to read where it comes from. So that's why I'm asking you this question. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they are literally taking away from their mothers mm -hmm. and they are fed homegrown man feed whatever they feed Corn, them. they're fed sorry the gmo they're fed the gmo oh but okay. then they're fed the corn the cows are fed cornmeal cows are naturally grass-fed mm -hmm. animals yes yes okay so instead of doing they don't have enough money for the grass so they feed them chicken pellets Cornmeal. Chicken pellets. Yeah, chicken pellets. Oh, okay. The, they're making the cows carnivores. Wow. Continue. Please. So, wow. that's what happens. Oh, wow. So, if you were to open up a cow's stomach, there's plaque on wow. the cow's stomach. Stomach. Wow. Walls. Mm -hmm. From the, from the, um, Food, the, the stuff that they've ingested. The stuff, the GMO, basically. Wow, wow. So in other words, if we ingested, that's us too. Yeah. Absolutely. So I was trying Glad to understand what, you know, what the big deal was. Because my son, when I go to the grocery store, we have to literally go to Whole Foods now. And my husband's always looking at the bill because it's a whole paycheck. But literally, you have to be careful even with the meats. 
what you're buying. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was asked to get to my question is, I wanted to understand what this whole big thing was because mm -hmm. they had a big thing on, it, on TV about them being in these little houses and I didn't understand why they were taking them away from their mothers mm -hmm. and just put them out in this hot desert and this is how they're feeding our cattle. It's just, if, I don't. If they're not able to move around, they're not burning calories. They're able to gain weight quicker, wow. and so they're able to be slaughtered quicker, and then they can keep continuously having wow. another batch, another batch, another batch. Along with that, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Wild means. Chicken. Before 1940, uh, chickens used to take about four months to grow to the point where they could be marketable, to grow to market, and, uh, to, to be then slaughtered also and be mm. sold to market. Now, uh, after 1940, uh, it now only takes about three to four weeks from four months. It now takes about wow. three to four weeks for a chicken to go from being hatched from the egg all the way oh, to wow. being market sized, to being marketable. And uh, that just tells you the amount of hormones that yes. that animal has been injected with. Uh, that in turn, people are ingesting, and we ask ourselves where so many issues of, again, uh, uterine cancer, prostate cancers, and things that teenagers have to start trying to prevent too. Let's just make better choices. Yes. Because you probably have seen aunts, uncles, grandma, someone mm -hmm. in the family that has suffered something of that disease that you really don't understand just yet, but there's ways to prevent. So let's make better choices. Wow, I didn't I didn't know that about oh, yeah. the chicken. Um, I have another shocker. <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, they're doing the same things to the chickens oh, absolutely. as well. Mm -hmm. Are they required to put that on the label as you're purchasing? You have you you have to be able to uh, see that okay. it's either a regular chicken or it's an organic chicken uh, that's you know, not, uh, that's farm raised, uh, you know, that can run around, that is mm -hmm. a free range, in other words, my apologies, free range, that has been able to exercise and move around and not just s be in one place and their food and their grains get thrown exactly where they uh, eliminate their feces and so they eat their feces and the grains at the same time. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Wow. So please, let's make better choices because then you're ingesting that as well. A fast food chain that had to change their name specifically. Uh, because they cannot legally say in their name any longer that what they sell any longer is chicken. Their chickens are cloned, and they are born without a head sometimes, without wings, maybe without a leg or so. Mm -hmm. Yes, without okay. mentioning any names. A fast food chain that legally has now had to uh, change their name. That, uh, well, some time ago had to change their name spe specifically because they cannot legally say anymore that what they sell is chicken. So that's, that's something that we need to take care of. Wow. Yeah. With that thought, <laughs> we are going to take a commercial, and we will be right back. So stay tuned. Old Spice Body Spray will make you feel so powerful to blow your mind right in front of your face. Goodbye. Oh, no! Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials! You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do! Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right.
Welcome back, and we just thank you for joining our conversation. I just want to take a brief moment to introduce our new guest, Ms. Kayla. We want to thank you for joining us today. Um, she will be joining us uh, on Thursdays when we're here and we're talking. But we, as we were finishing discussing, we were talking about chicken with Dr. Jolisa. <laughs> uh, and we, we thank you, Kayla, for that information because I, I really wanted to know what it was about cows and what was going on with the bins so that was very informative and I thank you for um, you know sharing I thank you very much for sharing um, we are going to just in general just have a, a conversation and ask questions right now uh, to Dr. Jolisa anything that you would like to ask her um, you know please ask her please let's have a conversation let's just ask and answer right now <laughs> I think Kayla had a question yes. my question is with the gluten thing there is speculation where kids with autism have, in their eyes, a glossy appearance because of the gluten in the bread and the casein in the milk and all that other stuff. Hmm. So why do they get that? I cannot confirm to you that a glossy appearance of the eye is actually related specifically to that. I cannot tell you that that's really the case. Uh, what I can tell you is that any issues going on with the eyes are definitely related to issues going on with the liver. Just because, and here's a little, little uh, science note, Chinese medicine has taught us that when the fetus is forming in utero, the eyes and the liver are both formed from the same piece of tissue. So wow. issues going on with the eyes definitely have to be, uh, are related to liver challenges. So if the body has a lot of toxins, if the liver's not filtering things the way it should, some issues are going to develop in the eyes. I cannot say that it's specifically because of the gluten and so on. It could be that they're not filtering certain foods the way they should, and maybe they're trying to make that, that uh, correlation, but I can't say that it's actually because of that. Wow, mm -hmm. interesting. I didn't know that the eyes and the liver. See, Absolutely. everything is, I, I, what I've learned because I, I started taking reflexology, you know, from the back, and I've learned that everything is connected to a certain piece of you. Mm -hmm. But I just learned now that the liver and the eyes are connected. That's interesting to know. When a person gets hepatitis, the eyes turn yellow. Red, yellow, wow. Yes. Interesting. Okay, there you mm. go. <laughs> okay, Shay, you have a question? Yes. Um, um, this happens to a lot of people. Like, if I get up too fast, or sometimes I'll just be walking and I get dizzy, and I don't know what why I get dizzy. I just, like, get dizzy, and I have to sit down, and my eyes, like, go all over the place and everything, and I don't know why that happens. It could be various reasons. Sometimes it's poor circulation to the head, poor oxygen, mm -hmm. poor, uh, poor oxygen to the head, uh, to the brain. That can cause some sort of imbalance, make a person feel a bit dizzy. It could also be that... Um, uh, there could be some inflammation of the inner ear, uh, something like Meniere's disease. Sometimes when people hear the ringing and so on, it could be caused by something like that. So that could be various reasons. I haven't done blood work on you. I don't know exactly <laughs> what's going on. But if we're dealing with me, skin challenges and things of that sort, I'm always going to go to the blood, and I'm going to think that maybe it's just some slight circulatory problem going on. If there's numbness of hands and feet too, if your hands and feet get kind of cold, then it's definitely circulatory. So put symptoms like that together. Okay, so Elizabeth, <laughs> would you like to ask a question? you have anything you'd like to add, say, uh, touch upon? Okay, Miss Angel. You know, there's one thing I do want to talk to you about okay. because on our, um, on your website, I want you to give your information right now. Thank you. Before anything, I want you to give information how they can contact you. Um, you know, go ahead and share that, and then I'll ask you this brief question. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for, for having me, ladies. I look forward to definitely being here with you and helping you guys go towards a better, better health in, in general and just have a healthier life overall. Uh, please know that you can find me at drjulisa.com. That's D-R-J-U-L-I-S-S-A.com. I've written many articles there uh, on various topics so please go to the search section put in the topic that you would like more information about hopefully I've written something already that'll give you a guide towards following a holistic manner of trying to heal and uh, you can reach me also my information is all over the website so they can mm -hmm. find my phone number there my office and so on I also do phone consultations and video Skype consultations for people that are outside of the New York City area and I travel out to see patients as well 
Well, I want to thank you, but I want to thank you for joining us today, and I want to thank you for um, interacting. I look thank forward you. to um, more partnerships. Um, we're looking forward to building a stronger relationship for the teens and encouraging those who are seeking to re redefine themselves mentally, spiritually, and physically. Um, I encourage you to go to her website. Um, the one thing I did want to talk about that I have been reading was the detoxify and cleanse to survive a toxic world. Mm. Um, this is also located, um, the article she just wrote is located on our Facebook page. If you go to All About Us um, Youth Magazine and All About Us Teen Talk TV, you will find this article. Um, but I just want you to get the logistics of what um, the article entails, especially youth who are trying to maybe detoxify their bodies, lose weight. Um, is there anything that you could leave them with? Um, you know, make sure you go to her website and read this article. It is very helpful. She has a lot of helpful information in there, natural things that you could do to really, you know, your skin, your hair. It's just things that we need to do to be healthy to make sure that we keep our organs working properly. So I'm going to give you this time just to give them a little, anything you want to leave with them. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Uh, we, we really touched upon a lot of uh, what I have stated there in the article as well. I talk there about children's cleansing and how they so much need to nowadays. We're talking about yes. uh, just from the fact that they're eating so much junk, uh, many of them are, and how they need to detoxify as well. I also discussed their dieters cleansing, specific cleanses specific to those people that want to focus on achieving a better uh, weight and, and correcting any uh, weight management problems that they may be having. Uh, I would say definitely make better choices, ladies. We talked about a lot of things here. Uh, you know, grabbing a bag of regular uh, tortilla chips and <laughs> maybe choosing a bag of organic tortilla chips. Forget about, you know, anyone really telling you that, oh, okay, the prices are just too high. Let, let's really consider when you grab a bag of regular chips, you grab it, you're sitting in front of the TV, and there's so many chemicals in there that are addictive that you ate the whole bag in about 15 minutes and you didn't even know it <laughs> happened. But if you grab a bag of, like, organic tortilla chips, you grab a handful, you're, you're satisfied and you're full because it's so wholesome tasting. Mm -hmm. It's so rich that just with a small amount, you're full. So you're buying less food. You're shopping for food less. The food is mm -hmm. lasting longer at home. So in reality, it comes out cheaper overall. So just think of that. Make better choices. Remember, you don't want to have weak bones. So the carbonated sodas are going to do that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and bettering the skin. That, that, that's all. Just eating the, the green veggies are my favorite for skin health. Anything for anti-aging. So <laughs> let's definitely do that as of a young age. All right, ladies? Okay, just so we, we're going to get ready to wind this up. But just for young girls <laughs> who are having, you know, cramps, are ah. very bad pains with their cramps. Okay. Is there something that you could just leave us with that they could use mm -hmm. to really help with that? My opinion, definitely use sanitary napkins instead of tampons. Okay. First of all, first of all, I do recommend that overall because anything that's going to obstruct the uh, vaginal tract is going to cause you to harbor and hold on to some irregular menses that you're not supposed to be holding on to. Okay, so you're not really having the mm -hmm. flow that you should. You want to prevent that. And uh, please know that certain foods that are very high in caffeine can also cause issues of reproductive system. So that can cause sometimes some of the cramping that a lot of girls are dealing with. Okay. Please understand that, okay? Uh, medication is not the way to do it. It's not normal for you to have cramps. Please know that. Okay. It is not normal for you to have cramps, okay? So you should be having a very good period without having to deal with pain and things of that sort. Use definitely your pads let things flow the way they should and that's my best advice and and eat definitely the greens the greens are going to cause good blood flow good circulatory system good healthy skin just overall i love the green veggies so well thank you dr jalisa <laughs> i want to thank my guests today kayla shay elizabeth and angel um i want you to go to www.aauym uh our promo is being released tomorrow morning so make sure you get all about us youth magazine uh, if you go to all about us youth magazine on Facebook if you go to AA, AA youth, uh youth magazine on Facebook you can also download a copy um, 
and we just thank you for joining us today. And tomorrow is my birthday. <laughs> I'm excited. That's the best gift I could ever have. And I, it's just a pleasure just being here. Um, we will be back again in two weeks. Um, we will have something fresh and something new. And my beautiful ch young ladies have brought <laughs> this lovely cake. We're gonna sing. They're gonna sing to me, and we're we're gonna be out. Go ahead and light you can it. Light it. Light it. Go ahead, light it. Go ahead, light it. That's beautiful. They made this cake just Happy for you. Birthday. Oh, Happy birthday. Wonderful. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Johnson. Happy birthday to you. Yay. I am 49. I am happy. I'm excited about what it, we're about to do. Um, I just, it's just a pleasure being here. And I just want to thank my girls. I want to thank Kayla. I want to thank Shay. I want to thank Elizabeth, Angel. And I want to thank Dr. Jolisa just for coming all this way and spending this afternoon with us. Um, please visit us again. We will upload the, the TV show to our website. If you go to AAU Teen Talk TV on Facebook, you will find us there, but you can also go to www.aauym.com. You can also reach us at 1-866-537-1110. Please visit us because we will have updates on different shows that are coming, different things that we will be doing, different things that we can connect to, and we hope that we are bringing you um, information that you can use. Uh, let us know you know, what you think and respond. Dr. Jalisa's information will be up on Facebook page as well for you to contact her. And we just thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you and have a great day. <laughs>